Hi friends, I'm Jess and welcome to the Hex Library. Today is going to be my wrap up for the month of June. I did not read very much in June, but much like last month, we're going to go over my stats first and then we'll go through the books. There will be chapters linked down below for you if you'd like to skip around because not everybody is into stats and that's absolutely fine. I haven't been doing very many stats. I just started doing these last month. If there are other stats that you're interested in, let me know in the comments and I can look at adding those in when we go over these. So I read six books for a total of 2,411 pages. Not my best reading month. Actually, not my lowest page count for the month or for the year, but my lowest book count for the year. My average rating though was four stars. Like an average of four stars is real good. My lowest rated book this month was 3.75. And that's six books, 3.75 or higher. And I looked through every other month and outside of February when I read 17 books, so February was like an anomaly and doesn't count. Um, every other month, like the most books I've had over 3.75 has been four. So didn't read a lot, but actually read a lot of good things. So I can live with that. Lengthwise, there were four books that were considered novel length and two that were considered weapon length, which means it's over 500 pages. It's a brick of a book. It's a weapon of a book. I read two chunky books. Genre wise, there was one paranormal and five fantasy. And age range, there were one mid grade and five young adult. No adult this month, which is crazy. I think this is the first month where I haven't read a single adult book. Super weird. I would believe that we could count one of them as an adult book in my opinion, but my opinion doesn't mean anything to anyone. So it is what it is. So the lowest rated book of the month at 3.75 is The Empty Grave by Jonathan Stroud. This was the concluding novel to Lockwood & Co. Uh, Lockwood & Co is a series where um, it's like an alternate history where at some point there was an outbreak of ghosts and the only people who can see the ghosts are some children and so these kids are set to fight the ghosts that come out every night because the ghosts can kill people and we're following three people who are uh, ghost hunters essentially and fight the ghosts. The series overall was pretty good other than book three where I hated the main character. Lucy was an absolute cunt in book three. Like it was it was disgusting. It was awful. I hated every second of book three. Um, it was not a good time for me. So the fact that I continue reading goes to show you how much I did actually like books one and two and four was good and five was also really good. Five had some really cute romance moments and also like some badass moments and I had a really good time reading it. So um, will I read from Jonathan Stroud again? Probably not. Did I enjoy this series? Yes. So some people had questions about things from the TV show, which I haven't watched yet, but if you have questions about the TV show and you want to know what happened in the book series since they canceled the TV show, I am happy to answer those for you. You can DM me and I will let you know the secrets. Then we had also at 3.75 stars, we had mm, The Mystic School of Music Craft by Jessica Cowrie. I actually finished this today. I enjoyed this. I think the characters definitely are side characters could have used some fleshing out. I think the plot could have been a little better but overall this was a very good mid-grade. It had a fantastic magic system so in this world magic aka spells are done by playing music and it can only be done by live music because it's really about your intentions and what you're feeling and the song specifically. Each song does a different thing and there are only certain people in this universe who can actually create new spells or new songs. So it's like a really interesting magic system that I had never really heard of before and I really enjoyed that aspect of it. Plot was a little all over the place. Characters could have been better but I did enjoy it and I may pick up the sequel. I do have um, Audible and it's one of the ones that's like free with Audible Plus so I may pick it up. I don't know. It was good. It made me cry because everybody's dead. So you know it's fine. Then at four stars, speaking of everybody being dead, Gallant by V.E. Schwab. I think this is considered a YA but it's a V.E. Schwab which is typically her adult stuff so I don't know. Is this an adult novel? You tell me. I, I can't. I can never tell. Like technically this is also V.E. Schwab. I don't know. Schwab? save me help me out i don't i don't know i don't know schwab books or schwab books i don't know if they have an age bracket okay any who's all 
Gallant follows a girl who grows up in like this orphanage because she didn't have a family because everybody's dead. They left her on their doorstep. She finds out she actually does have family and they invite her back to Gallant which is her home but all she had as a child was her mother's diary and her mother's diary said never go back to Gallant and she's like yeah but I got a family there so she decides to go back to Gallant and shit happens people die I didn't like it why do you have to kill so many people I actually did really enjoy this book um it was an interesting magic system an interesting world I had a fun time but just like if Schwab could have a few less cups of tea with Satan that would be great speaking of Schwab and her tea with Satan uh also four stars I got her in the shadows this is the second book in the Shades of Magic trilogy. Um, I read the first 30% of this last year and it was right when my sister's cancer came back and so then I put the book down because we were dealing with shit and then I never picked it back up and I was like I'll get back to it one day but I'm gonna have to start over from the beginning because I don't really remember much of what happened and I want to give it a fair shot. It took me two reads through A Darker Shade of Magic to really enjoy it so I was like I need to reread the first part of this and I was doing a readathon in June that called for picking up a book that you had done a soft DNF on so I decided to pick this up. I read it. I had a great time. I really enjoy this book. I love the characters. I love the world. The plot could have used a little bit of oomph in this one but still had a fantastic time. I feel like with with Schwab's books especially this series in particular I feel like I need to read it more than once to really enjoy it which is a weird thing to say but because you know typically you would think that you would enjoy it less as you continue to read but I think I understand it more the second time through so I think I enjoy them more on the second time through because I understand more things also this is the UK cover this is not the cover that I ordered I ordered a US cover I got a UK cover I don't know how or why it doesn't match the rest of the books in my series I'm not real happy about it I'm gonna have to find a, UK, a US cover that's not those ugly ass new US covers it's gonna be a time okay it's gonna be a time and I'm not okay with it but I'll be okay the next two have two different ratings but we're going to talk about them at the same time because they are the first and second books in a series and that is Daughter of the Pirate King and Daughter of the Siren Queen which is the sequel. Um, I gave Daughter of the Pirate King 4.5 and Daughter of the Siren Queen 4.25. This series follows Alosa who is <clears throat> the Daughter of the Pirate King in case you didn't figure that out. Uh, she is the captain of her own ship. She gets herself taken aboard in the ship of Draxon and his brother Raiden, who's his first mate, and also our love interest. It's adorable. They have some of the best banter in YA. Absolutely love it. Had a fantastic time. Love them. Love the story. Ended up at like a weird location in the third act and there was like a, some like special trick done with the uh the, the the villain of the book it was fantastic the second book also great um I read this book in a couple of days and then immediately the day after I finished this I read the entirety of the second book and then I ordered the pretty new covers the special editions and there's a third book coming out later this year and I'm super stoked so I had a great time reading these and I have had these on my shelf since 2018 and hadn't read it yet and I think it was on my my these books of self-destruct list for this year why have I been waiting so long to read this book it's fantastic so these are four of the six books that I read this month let me know in the comments below if you have read any of those and if you liked them if you didn't like them let me know if you made it this far in the video and or you're not feeling chatty leave me a music note emoji of some sort I'm sure there is one that is all I have for today. I post reading, writing book, and planner related content a couple times a week. If you don't want to miss anything I have going on in the future, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell down below. And until then, I will see you guys next time. Bye!